Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my fabulous bestie, Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie, Jessica. All right, so we are gonna do some historical romances for you guys today. This should be fun. It's not a trope that I tend to jump on, but I do like it when I'm in it. And I think you feel the same way? Yes. I I was like actually looking and I have not read that many since we mm -hmm. did it last time. So I think most of the historical romances I've read since our last video will be featured in this video. <laughs> But I question myself because I'm like, I really enjoy these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in all honesty, I prefer to listen to historical romance. Me too. 100%. Me too. Yeah. Um, before we get started talking about historical, though, what do you want to tell them? Well, Jessica, on today's episode. <laughs> no. All right. So hit that subscribe button so you can win these books by Keller Reed. Absolutely fantastic. If you're new or new to our channel, we um, talk about Keller Reed all the time. So you definitely want to win these books and you can go check out our other videos to get more information on them. But hit that subscribe button, follow us on Instagram for an extra entry. Do it to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Historicals. Um, I agree with you. I like to listen to my historicals. Uh, it's probably the only time I don't mind the third person situation. Yes. As so but I've said before, and I know in one of our videos where I mentioned it a few weeks ago in one of our one minute book recs, that I prefer like mail order bride. I like the, the Western type of historicals. And somebody did give a couple of recommendations or a recommendation. I've downloaded those. I haven't got to read them yet. So unfortunately, they're not on this list. But I have other ones. So it's good. Okay. All right. So let's do it to it. Um, and so let's. I'll go first. Um, speaking of his Westerns, I have a Western historical here. So... Okay. This whole trilogy, I think it's actually, there's four books in it total. I love it. Um, this is Texas Destiny by Lorraine Heath. I've read several things by Lorraine Heath and I like her books um, for historicals. But this is about Amelia and she is a mail order bride. She is on her way to Texas and she's going to be meeting her husband who is Dallas. And when she gets to the train station, she gets off the train and she sees, you know, she's wearing a hat or something so that he would recognize her. And, and she sees this guy who's got whatever he needs to have for her to recognize him. And she, you know, introduces herself and goes up to him and he's like, oh, wait, 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 I'm not Dallas. I'm his brother, um, Houston. All these boys have Texas names. I'm his brother, Houston. Dallas had an injury and is left on the homestead. I think he broke his leg or something. He had a, a bad fall. And so he sent his brother. Now, this guy, our our hero, our, our Houston here, was in the Civil War when he was like 14 and he lost an eye and his face is a little deformed on one side. And so he doesn't think he's ever going to get married. But they have like a three-week trek from the train station to the homestead. And a lot can happen in three weeks. So while the brother's waiting at home for his wife. So there you go. Okay. So good. It was good. The whole trilogy. I loved all of these books in the series. I'm pretty sure it's all right. Okay. What do you got? Okay. So my first book is A Week to be Wicked by Tessa Dare. So this follows Minivere. Minivere? Uh, Minera? How do you say Minerva? It? Is it Minerva? Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. Minerva. They call her Min for short okay. on there. Okay. Or M. So Minerva and Colin. So Minerva needs to get to Scotland. She wants to go on this geo to this geological wow <laughs> symposium. Goodness. And she has some findings that she wants to print present there. And so to get there, she needs some help. And so she tries to get Colin to go with her. And he reluctantly agrees to go with her. And so what ensues is like shenanigans, like just crazy adventures these two have. And I loved it. It was so much fun. So they have to travel. I think it's like over 400 miles to where they're going in Scotland. And so they travel by carriage and they end up sleeping like together in the same bed at night because Colin has like horrible nightmares and 
insomnia, which leads to other things. So we have like that whole forced proximity, one bed trope happening. And just Colin just tells these wildest stories and the craziest things happen on the way to this. And this kind of has like a little, a little enemies to lovers feel because he and her don't necessarily get along, which is a, like part of the story as well. So it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the story and their adventures. So, oh, thank you. I got you. <laughs> I see that. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody loves a good one bed trope. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the next book that I have, I thought it was more popular than what it was. I wasn't going to put it in this list because I've seen it around. I've heard other people talking about it. But then when I went to Goodreads and checked it out, it does not have that many reviews on Goodreads. So we're going to talk about it. I really loved this one. And that is When the Earl Met His Match by Stacey Reed. Um, I do like Stacey Reed, the, the Stacey Reed books that I've read. She's always been a four or five stars for me. I, I really like her writing. Um, but this is about Hugh. And Hugh advertises in a London paper for a wife. And instead of getting like the, the usual response, he gets a response from a woman critiquing his ad in the paper and being like, that's not what women want. Um, we're looking for something more. And that, <laughs> that gets a little crazy because they, they start writing back and forth to each other and corresponding. Uh, and that person that he's talking to is Phoebe. And Phoebe thought that she was in love and she made a mistake when it came to the guy that she was in love with and she finds herself in a very compromising position and she has it, it's just a really bad situation and so she runs and one day uh hugh finds her on his doorstep and he's like How, how'd she get here now here's the deal with hugh he is mute he cannot he doesn't talk um or he's deaf no, i shouldn't say he's mute he's deaf and so he has taught himself a form of sign language as well. So you have that on top of all of this. So I I loved this story a lot. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Yeah. So, okay. What do you got? All right. Next up, I have Destiny's Surrender by Beverly Jenkins. This follows Drew who uses the services of a working girl and her name is like Will Lima or something like that, and she, but she goes by Billy. And he actually treats her very well. He takes her out on the town, he buys her things, but Billy is a working girl. She understands this and she really doesn't have any hopes for anything different between the two of them. But she ends up getting pregnant and so she has the baby and then she goes looking for drew because she needs protection for the baby and herself and so she goes looking for drew shows up at his house during his engagement party because drew has decided that he needs to settle down and fulfill his obligations and find a wife and so this is more of a marriage of convenience but still she comes knocking with the baby on his, like, at his engagement party. Absolutely love this one. Okay. That sounds loved pretty it. And that, that It was sounds... really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The next book I have takes place during the Prohibition. So this is a little bit of a different uh, time frame than a lot of historicals. But um, it was good. It is reverse harem, though. I mean... Of course it is. Of course it is. Okay. So that is um, Men of Mayhem and Vengeance by Lauren Beale. There goes my bookmark. By Lauren Beale. Hold on. Okay. Stabbing me in the boob. All right. So Men of Mayhem and Vengeance. When she first wrote this, it was, there were two books. They were like two novellas and it was Men of Mayhem and then Men of Vengeance. But now it's a combined little dually here. So when you're looking for it, sometimes it's split up. But this is about Sylvia. And like you said, it takes place in, during the Prohibition. And Sylvia's mom owes these guys money. And, and so she's, she just owes this, this gangster, these gangsters money, as happens in a lot of these books. So Sylvia is taken as collateral until mom can pay them back. Um, and that's where she meets our four 
mobsters or poor gangsters. And instead of giving her back, they decide that they just want to keep her basically is what happens. She becomes their mall. She, she's, she goes on the run with them or they, they rob, they, they do all the good things. It's kind of like a cross between Peaky Blinders and Bonnie and Clyde. And I loved it. I loved it so much. And it was different as far as historicals go. Um, I believe it's told in first person. Yeah. Yeah. So it worked for me. So All right. I, I have a thing about like, I loved the untouchables and stuff. So this worked for me. I, I, I like that, that era. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What do you got next? Okay. Next I have healing a Highlander's heart by Kira Montclair. So, this is follows Brenna and Quaid. Brenna gets kidnapped out of her home in the middle of the night because she is a healer. And so, which she performs a lot of similar things like a doctor would in today's time. But they kidnap her and bring her to heal uh, Quaid, who has been hurt out when they're out and about. And <clears throat> so they take her. She helps Quaid. And then they go back and Quay promises to return her home, but he doesn't. He actually takes her with him because he needs her to heal his daughter. Love this one. So very suspenseful, uh, lots of action happening. And Brenna just has a really good heart. So I really enjoyed this one. And so does Quaid once you get underneath all of what's going on. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the next one I have is it's a historical it's a historical romance but we also see a situation between sisters and so there's some of that healing that family vibes too and i kind of i loved the sister aspect of this even though the sisters don't get along um and this one is called um forgiving and it's by laver Lil spencer uh, i think it's my second laver Lil spencer and i like the first one too so the first book i read i don't remember what that one was called but i did love it um but this is on audio so i did listen to this one and it is about Sarah. Sarah hasn't seen her sister in five years. She believes her sister has gone out west to Deadwood. So this is the beginning, like the start of Deadwood, the, the mining town when that was um, established. And she believes her sister has gone to Deadwood to work for a upper class woman, like as, as, a, as a worker for her, like as a maid type situation or a house girl or whatever. And when her father dies, she decides she's going to go and she's going to surprise her sister. Her sister walked away from a fiance and that fiance wants to know what is going on with the sister. Um, he, he's, you know, just heartbroken that she's gone. And so Sarah goes to Deadwood to start up a newspaper. Her dad was a newspaper man. He taught her the trade. And so that's what she goes to do. When she gets there before she can go look for her sister, she runs into Noah, who is the new marshal in town. And Noah is very gruff. And he's very surly and he's just, you know, he's just the grumpy guy that we all love. And their meet cute really is, oh, it's pretty funny. Um, and he ends up throwing her in jail almost immediately, which is just great. But then when she goes to find her sister, she realizes that her sister had lied to her. And she's not a house girl. She's a house girl, as in working in the brothel. And sister has a lot of issues and, um, their relationship is very torn. So we see that, you know, they, they work them work on that throughout. But so you have the story of Sarah and Noah, which I really love. This really is their story, but then you have that side plot of the sister and you just want her to have a happily ever after too. So, um, I did, I loved this one too. So what's your next one? All right. My next book is a notorious vow by Joanna Shoup. Okay. And so we have Christina, whose parents are trying to marry her off for money. And by marry her off, they're trying to marry her off to like an old man who has a really bad reputation for how he treats women. And they're like, oh, we're like, the mom's trying to sell her on it. Like, oh, we're doing you such a favor because he's not gonna live long. Like what? So she panics, like she does not want to marry him. And so she has been going off and going for walks and she walks around one of her neighbor's gardens and he catches her and he is not pleased, but 
Christina does not give up easily and she's determined to become friends with Oliver. Now Oliver's kind of shut himself off a little bit from the world because he is very wealthy um, and controls like his family's uh, estate and everything. But he has gone, let me just double check this. He is deaf. Sorry, I just want to make sure I said the right thing. He is deaf, but he um, has learned sign language. And so some of people are able to communicate with him. But he he doesn't like want to deal with the outside world. But he reluctantly kind of gives in and becomes friends with Christina a little bit. And when she comes to him like in hysterics about having to marry this man, he knows the man and he's like, no, no, this is not good. So he agrees, and again, very reluctantly, to marry her in name only, no benefits, just for a year while she can try and figure out what she's going to do. But of course, as we know, nothing's ever as simple as that. So loved this one. And just, it's kind of fun to be in a different time and read different you know things happening mm -hmm. and stuff it is i i like it sometimes um so this is my last rec and this one's even a little different from the other ones that i told you guys about because this takes place back in the viking era so this one is Ooh. way old historical so but I, it was so good when i read it it was i i loved it way um, old okay historical mm -hmm. what'd you call it I said way old historical. It's a way old historical. Like, it's way old back there. Okay. So this one is called Nina, and it's by Anne Bolter. And it is the first book in her Viking Treasure Hunt series. I really want to go read the second book. The first one is on audio, and it's a it's a thick book. So um, I was waiting for the second one to come out. Um, it's a different couple in the second. So I'm still waiting on that one. But this is about Nina and Jarl. So Nina is like a, a barbarian type princess, at least that's what they referred to her as, barbarian. Um, and she has been trained as a warrior and because the women in these tribes are warriors as well. And so she is the daughter to the chief of this clan and they go to like a, a gathering of all of the clans and it's so that Nina can finally find a husband because apparently she needs one. Her father insists that she has a husband and she's not very happy about that, but they go to do it. In the meantime, you have Jarl, who is our Viking conqueror, and he has come from Viking land, and he's, you know, he's he's out raiding and pillaging, and they actually come upon this gathering, and they attack, and when that happens, um, Nina obviously fights back, but Jarl takes her, and she is his captive. He actually chains her in his tent to a pole because this girl is wild, and she, you know, she could hurt him, and he does a lot of bad things. Definitely took triggers for this one. He does a lot of things to get her attention. He doesn't actually hurt her, um, but their, their relationship is very hate to love. Um, it's not an instant thing, but I loved the story the one thing i will say is when you first start out in the story the first the prologue that happens or the first part of it talks about the ship and the guy who built the ship and how like it's it's the story of yarl and how he got his ship that drug a tiny bit for me so if you can get past that that is when the story really picks up and it's just a small point part but there was this part of me going why do i need to know this it is relevant later on just saying um but this has that dark captor captive, um, you know, barbarian feel to it. You were looking at that for a while. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. All right. I just so was getting prepared. I know. It's okay. Okay. So tell me about your last book. I'll have to like get, do this next time. I have my notes right here. And then it almost look like I can't look at the camera I instead think, of looking to the I side. I think our our viewers understand we have to read our notes every once in a while in between. That's okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What's your last rec? Okay, my last rec is Flowers from the Storm by Laura Kinsale. And this follows, I've already forgot her name again. Jeez, this follows Maddie <laughs> and the Duke of J is what they call him, which I absolutely love. <laughs> and so he gets around and like, you know what I mean? Like he gets around. He's this brilliant mathematician 
and he like he's gotten around okay <laughs> and maddie and her dad her dad does math like he's a mathematician too maddie's dad has lost his sight so maddie often will accompany him to help him at different gatherings of mathematicians so she's seen the duke a few times well, she gets a job working, I think actually it's a volunteer position, working at like this mental hospital. And like, again, this is back in the 1800s. So the way things are dealt with are very, very different than how they would be now. And the Duke of J ends up having a stroke and everybody thinks that he's just gone mad. So they have him committed. And so Maddie works with him at this place and she realizes that he's actually trying to talk and that something has happened to his speech. It's not that he has gone mad. And so <clears throat> from there, she tries to help him, but women weren't really listened to back then. And there's some people that don't really want him to have his title back. So they're not eager to see him get out of the, the, the hospital. So very good. Loved it. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that's it for history. No, that's not it for history. This video is history. Okay. No. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. <laughs> so that's it for historical. Make sure you check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us. And on some of those Wednesdays, you will see author interviews popping up. So always stay tuned to our community tab here. We'll try and let you know in our videos as well. And also on Instagram, we always post whenever we have extra things happening like that. Mm -hmm. Leave us a comment. What are some of your favorite historical romances? Do you like this trope? Maybe you don't. Tell us that too. Tell us all the bookish things. We love to chat with you in the comments. And remember, if you click that notification bell, you will get notified when we post as well. So yes, there's always that option too, if you're afraid you're going to miss something. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.